will show things, but also at a certain point, uh, uh, maybe he will stop and uh, I propose to him and he quite likes that to work, to work with the question, the question session afterwards. Uh, he's quite pleased to, uh, to do. And there will be more material that he will show possibly again so that might come to the questions.
also don't The uh, airport, Huawei, you could see those fantastic light, such lights in the night, in the sky, in the sky, in the clouds. It was a, probably those who are, have my own age, can remember that you want it, you know, fantastic spectacle, spectacle. And uh, the, uh, but all this, uh, that you can see even today, not even today, especially today, when you have on TV the, um, the rockets coming from ships or some of those, very fast. They are very beautiful, like the uh, flying stars. So that was, uh, that were the impressions. So when I went to Paris, I found the situation which was very interesting because it was very or birth of uh, the concrete music that is a musical tape, tape, uh, tape made for music music, out of any sounds, and then the serial music which tried to be very uh, organized and I would say kind of interesting. That the serial music which uh, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, was usually lived out of some basic statements in composition, and then statements which were very rigorous and supposedly very historical and necessary. And for out of that, you could expand maybe into a whole composition. That is a very uh, dominating kind of idea. That, that was not important. I liked, I was interested in that because it was close to what we have the range of thinking, so the human thought was uh, uh, people were trying to do, like the uh, axiomatization of the movies that was done by Colombo in the 30s. Before that, all movies were considered as something which were not recognized. Huh? And also, be before that, of course, you have all the 19th century tendency of them to uh, establish a uh, much more sound power logic and mathematics we do with, uh, with all the school, uh, the general school of uh, the same theory, everything, counter, so on so forth. And you have some comparison in that domain also with what happened in other domains, like, uh, for instance, in uh, painting, with uh, abstraction, which is close to that kind of basic research in the expression, the visual expression those two, as I said, from also what is interesting the uh, movement of the 20th, the movement in the French the painting, which is again something that is close to the kinetic gas theory of the okay. mm -hmm. so, uh, Well, the kinetic uh, gas theory, which is called today uh, static mechanics, was invented by and uh, Boltzmann around the end of the 19th century in order to, to explain what's the pressure, what is the temperature based on uh, the fantastic amount of molecules that you have in the gas in here, for instance, of 10 power 23 molecules per centimeter. And uh, so the uh, continuistic which is linked, perhaps, to some extent to the mosaics of the past, is how to produce uh, microscopic features out of their tiny elements. Microscopic features like the clouds that we see, or the galactic clouds that we don't see, or the smoke, the cigarette, and so on and so forth. So that's that was an interesting if you compare the activities to various such domains, you can see that there is a kind of uh, converge, converging uh, tendency in those domains, even they are not linked, because I suppose that if Schoenberg, for instance, would have based or elaborated the technique, the technique, if he had no probabilities, he would have entered opposed probabilities. That, it had to, that kind of thing <coughs> had to wait many years until I came and I performed. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so these are, uh, let's say, the landscape of the environment, which I was so At the same time, there was an interpretation that I had to do a film by living in Paris now. By living in one of the music and uh, by chance, because there were many breaks at the Corps Business Office, I was hired there. I didn't care for anything. But I had the training of uh, engineer training. And so uh, the uh, problem of uh, the thinking about music, what is music? Should it be in the, and also, uh, this is my ancient lecture, which I find that is very interesting and very interesting in philosophy and in the sciences of that time, and ideas also. So all these things uh, may be question why, what is music, what is composition, and what is music. So music was made out of, uh, let's say, playing, out of melodic lines, which means that uh, pitch versus time domain is very important for music. It's true. It's true when you have the instrument, the human voice. And uh, the other aspects of characters sound like tone, like color, for instance. And uh, the intensity was less important during the history of evolution of, uh, of the sound. So the main, the main features of the music at the time, and still today, important, maybe not the main, but important, main perhaps in the pop music. Well, the uh, melodic patterns in time, that is rhythm, rhythm and pitches. So that was the, uh, so why, what is the melodic pattern? Why should it be like this or like that? And what is the problem of, uh, the ground problem of the melodic pattern? Which goes down to the problem of the scales. We'll talk later about that, scales. Like the piano scale, the white keys, or the black keys, or the white and black keys. The white keys are the main scale, on the main scale of the uh, Western tradition, which goes back to Aristotle's. And uh, that is the of the fifth and the royal and so the of the tenth chords. Why those? Why the other type of scales which were proposed by the Dodecaphonic? Music like uh, Russian and the election, which was very dominating in those times in the fifties in Paris and in Germany. Why that? <coughs> what is the necessity? And what is written also? How can you select what is the reading of the patterns? And I had a fantastic uh, opportunity to listen to some music from India, traditional music and Japan and Asia, and it was a very important discovery for me to you know this music. And uh, suddenly, the same questions I was asking in the West, in Paris, let's say, I was asking about those music. What is the link of those music? Is the human mind different in India or in Japan? Then the Western mind is the same thing. And what is the basic grounds for the same things that are in our minds? So that was. Uh, Together with the experience of the high I had in my youth, suddenly became the necessity to express them in a different way. And this is the starting point of 33 years ago, or 35 years ago in the Middle East, from the Gustavo II. Uh, although the traditional one is a, uh, really a 
higher. As you do that, the child will sing a lower tone because in his mind, the uh, small beast beings are doing sharp sounds like the mice, like the children, where the parents have low voices and they are big. So, no, that's important how to represent the, the basses, the low sounds, up or down. Anyway, you have a kind of uh, dimension that is known from the three dimensions. And on that dimension, you are facing points, spots, where the pitches are from lower sounds, which are down. So the chironomy, that is the movement conduct a course, for instance, was also shaped in that sense, that is, when you take it so, it was a higher pitch, and it's a lower pitch. And in time, there's the speed of the movement. But then the basic, I mean, the fundamental principle came with the grid of the of the 10th century, which linked mm -hmm. those things in a space, two-dimensional space, which was the style. And you have to wait <coughs> with the properties, the metric properties and symbolic ones. And you have to wait three centuries with, with Erasmus in uh, France, the 14th century, and uh, seven, six centuries later with Descartes, who invented the analytic geography, which is used today still. So the musicians were ahead of their time much. So now, we can go back to more universal sort of thing, and this is what I wanted to show you on the board, blackboard, to uh, explain the graphs which will be used in this talk. <coughs> so let's see, I don't know, but you can hear me. Do you? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so vertical line, on that vertical line, uh, you take, for instance, a uh, given point, you take a unit, a pitch unit, let's say that uh, three or two inches here correspond to a semitone, then any point on that line, for instance, this first point, which is a reference point, would be a name. Any point if you give that unit also, that unit also, any point of that line will have a meaning, it's meaning, it's a pitch. Now, if you want to time, you have to write another axis, which is horizontal, and again you need a starting point, now, more, and then a unit back to different, not necessarily the same as that one of the pitch unit, can be different, which will be, let's say, a tenth of a second, of a second or a year. So each point on that, on this uh, two dimension of my black dog, would correspond, will have a meaning by these coordinates. This will be a point in that pitch, and at that instant. So I can draw music in a universal way, everybody would understand that. And, uh, a traditional, let's say, melodic pattern made out of uh, like a bath melodic pattern. We differ by a kind of step, step uh, graph like this, because this stone is held from that point to that instant, then you jump to another, because of the melodic pattern, to another uh, height. And you hold it that much, you take it down, lower one, and so you have such a figure. And suddenly, it's obvious that you can draw any kind of line, and that will have also a meaning. It will be a kind of descending, going past here, up, then descending, curving like this, and so on and so forth. And you can also just do any kind of shapes, as I show you. Is there any question about that? It's clear, right? Yes? Just one question. It still looks linear. 
I'm sorry? It still looks linear. It is a line, of course. It is a line, because we are in two-dimensional space depending on which person's time. If you want to represent our dimensions, that will be more and more difficult. Look, for instance, on the uh, displays that we have today, uh, digital ones, at most you have only three dimensions. Because by using the dot, you can do that. Also, displaying sounds in three-dimensional space on the CRTs, but then you lose uh, very fast, very quickly, the meaning because you are not used to such representation. It's too complex. But the musicians have, uh, uh, have, have developed a fast, quick, let's say, way of uh, more, more than two dimensions than that representation. But for instance, for the intensities, you just like you can easily hear that this for instrumental music, of course. When you do like that, it's a glissando in, in intensity, and you have participatory intensity. So they, when they read a, uh, a line, they know that the intensity is close to that also. And you have the instruments with these, which gives you the term. And that are the basic characteristics of the sound, let's say, let's take as an example, this is the instrumental sounds. Like if you go on the more complex levels, and I like you to think that music is like a new furry. How do you say that? <laughs> it's a pastry, <laughs> which has many layers of uh, cream and, uh, and things like that. But that which is transparent, music is like that. It is transparent, and you are, let's say, in the middle of that pastry, and you are able to see the macroscopic shapes of it, but also down to the, to the microscopic, that is, the tiny events, tiny elements at the same time. For example, when you hear this in the Beethoven symphony, you are able to, to suddenly to be caught by just one note, and at the same time, you can hear the other patterns, or chords, or even understand the architecture of the theme. Of the, whole, uh, of the whole thing. So at the same time, you are instantly there, and thanks to your memory, you are in the past, and you can foresee and be uh, deceived but, uh, by, by what will come, or you can totally be attracted by it. And then it will be a good music, of course, if you are attracted by it. I don't know uh, if you are not annoyed at what will happen each time. So this is a way to uh, write down. Why do we need to write music? Let us suppose that we, we didn't need to write music. Suppose that our brain was so powerful that we could remember things that they used to do in ancient times. They could by heart to learn text and text or even be at the gathering and remember what they had heard from each one of the present people and then as you have in the values of Plato, they knew what happened six months before, uh, or years before. But that was a technique that is, has been lost because we have too much <coughs> in papers now, and uh, we don't know how to remember things. But suppose that we did have this visual expression of sound, of music, or of, of uh, the language, then uh, I think that we lost because the eye is very fast. It compensates for the years long. And besides that, with the eye, why is it, why is it fast? Because you can judge on this instantly the shapes now and later on. Whereas when you listen to something, you are instantly there. You have to remember what happened before. And then, so it's very helpful to have a graphic, graphic representation of the sound. So let's see now. Uh, can we show the first case? So, we put it in the So, the first thing was how to produce mass events because of that skill. Mass events you can produce with the orchestra, of course, especially with a string orchestra because there are about 60 people that can play all sorts of notes uh, at any time, I mean, uh, certain speed that we find. Any time, yes. Uh, <coughs> uh, yes. So you can reproduce 
without events, mass events. It's like being a sculptor that will be able to control molecules in space, which is not the case today yet. Uh, but this is the case with sound. So you can check, test, and introduce new ways of shaping, shaping the sound thanks to the mass movements of, uh, of uh, tiny elements. Now, in this case, you have uh, not tiny elements, they are visible. But then you can do the same approach with many lines, many straight lines. The visible is a sliding tone that can be assimilated to a uh, straight line in, uh, uh, in space, in the two-dimensional, three-dimensional space here, provided that you can, uh, um, uh, you can decide to one, to end, one, end, one of the dimensions to time. Now, do you have the right to do that? Can you assign a space, spatial dimension? Time, which has nothing to do with space, has nothing to do before the relativity theory. Okay? <laughs> Everyday time has nothing to do. <clears throat> yes, it is possible. Why? That was one of the things that I have to do. I ask myself, why can I draw time on a straight line, like points? Of course, I have that experience from my community school, but then music. Again, I had to ask myself, why is it possible to do that? And uh, why do I do the same thing with pictures? What is the right, what is beneath that, that possibility, which is right and right, and practical works, experimental. And I discovered that uh, under, under nine, thing is the our structure, the brain structure. And uh, in that case, the brain structure is, uh, is able to order the things. That is, the points on the line are formed. The pictures that we hear without thinking about space are formed because we are able to distinguish between three pictures which one is in the middle of one higher <coughs> and one lower. The same with time. For instance, now there was another thing yesterday, and there will be another instant or event tomorrow. So we can do that. And uh, I must remember, remind you, the work of Jean Piaget, which uh, was a constructivist, a structural structuralist, who first tried to uh, uh, study what happens with the child's brain of uh, the Swiss child, of course, in your children. <laughs> Uh, at some age, and he discovered that age of, from age of 5 up to 12, the development, the development is really very important before the child is in, in, unable to distinguish between, between uh, the order, that is, things that have events that happened yesterday or that will happen tomorrow, and how is this thing? Says uh, he uses the not because he doesn't know the verb, the past tense, or the future tense, but because he confuses them. There is no structure to get in his mind. And later on, that is after seven years, he is able to understand the, to, to conceive the ordering of the time, the strict order, as they call it, that we have now. Parenthesis, discovered that in the 19th century, uh, not the second age, sorry. So, they are able to do that, and moreover, to, uh, not to mix that is more than the future with the past or the present, but also to distinguish the differences, that is the intervals, the time intervals, that is the durations. And the durations, they could commute. They could say, an hour tomorrow is the same thing as an hour yesterday. And that is basically. And after that, everything stops. That, we, that is, we have 12 years of age, everything is made, finished. So we have a mind of 10, 20 years, a child of 20 years. I'm sorry, this is the case. This is the case. <laughs> <laughs> so <coughs> here, therefore, you have the possibility, you have lines, straight lines. Straight lines are discerned, 
and uh, as I explained on that board, that means that uh, this is the pitch with a special unit, and that is the type with again a special unit uh, thanks to the metronomic of your watch. And you have a mass uh, uh, movement there, and of course you see here a kind of disorder. Apparent disorder, which indeed is some kind of disorder, by mixed with some order, because the, the uh, intervals, time intervals, where these slides, these uh, sliding doors are uh, uh, growing, are starting, are uh, intervals according to a Fibonacci series. That is a geometric. <coughs> Geometric progression to which we are very sensitive, much more than the uh, alphabetic one, as you know, we do not know. But that also, but that was discovered in the 19th century by the uh, psychologists, and it was the first step of experimental psychology that is the logarithmic relationship with senses and physical causality. But we have the music, we have the best example of that kind of relationship of the human understanding and the physics that are behind it. Probably the animals are the same. So let's listen to this beginning of the piece, which is called metastasis, that is uh, uh, mutations. Mutations, uh, because in here we have also the problem of transformation, continuous transformation, not sudden transformation.
Well, we're not going to collect this for the end of the century. Next one. Do you need church and um... Yes. He built the other piece of that spot. <coughs> so this is another uh, shading with uh, such elements like straight lines, conversion, at the beginning we were diverging, diverging, and here they are conversion from very high amount of information, let's say, that is huge entropy in language of uh, statisticians towards a one tone that you can see here, which is here, we have started there, one tone. So maximum of minimum entropy, starting <coughs> transformation of ataxic, because it's most, it's, a, it's a, a notion of entropy is linked to the amount of information, Next one, this is the score of the response to the graph, the game down to it, and it's there. And the piece, the, the version that I played you was done in the in 1955 by Hans Rosbaum, the now one of the game, one of the most important conductors of the world of the music in Germany. And uh, it's more known. I think it's the best uh, version. Next one. Next one. And I must, uh, this is the first time that uh, a score in its only states were produced in the history of music. Because uh, all these things are divided. So the Corbusier asked me to do a design of a, uh, for the Felix exhibition, I mean the Brussels exhibition in 58. In order that the Phoenix could place inside the shapes, uh, uh, say the uh, machines, the washing machines, the cooling machines, whatever they were used. And they were just saying, no, I do set a spectacle inside with lights and music, and he asked my eyes to do the music. You know, he's one of the most important minds in this composition of the 20th century. And uh, the, um, I'm the architecture that will be done for uh, a few, few months, because for six months, I think. And he asked me to do the architecture, asked me to consider the three kinds of uh, screens that uh, could be used. One curved screen like this, one that's concave, another one convex, and another one, this one flat. And this is a kind of, uh, of uh, drawing of the same thing on the uh, on, on floor. So she said, try and do something and do something else. <laughs> and you can see that uh, here he designed also those straight lines, which was a kind of fancy scaffolding from which was suspended uh, cables. And all those cables were suspended a kind of net metallic net and which there was supposed to be projection of plaster all of the uh, cement in order to make that kind of whatever shape. I try to do that, next please. And finally, when I go very fast, that is the because the people were going to come in through this kind of pipe, sit and stand there for about six minutes, expecting and then be uh, while the other people were coming in the line on the line to enter the scene line. So that was the round floor uh, shape that is like a stomach. Next one. That is a nice little idea. And then how to cover that? So after a week, I came up with the idea of uh, using the lines in order to produce shapes in space, self standing without any scaffolding. Suspended. That was much more interesting type also. And next one, and we probably accepted the drawing, which but he said, please uh, do a model so I can understand that. If you don't have the minds, they're going to put And it was not very close to what he was doing. And I was saying that he accepted the thing. Uh, ah, ah, next one. So this is the model out of piano strings and uh, uh, elastic, elastic threads. And you can see that the 
shapes are produced by these lines, which are in fact cables here, putting together some slabs that you see. So these are forms are double coloured forms, the double coverage of which are very important in acoustics, in the resistance of the material, because it's like the shape of the sphere, like the length, it's very difficult to break, whereas if you have the exactly the same thickness of the leg shape flat, you can pierce it very easily. Next one. No, this is the Well, it's a design that the architects use a lot of the labor. And you put the buildings there in the shape of the building. This is the pure geometry of the building. Next slide. This is the construction, which is very interesting. I didn't discover that. You can see that this shell, simply because it has to be, have to be a shell of two inches thick, we are uh, producing with sand, on sand, uh, in exactly the geometric description of it. And here you have small, uh, you have the steel uh, mesh, mesh, and you have the concrete, which is cement, which is in there, you know, produced. Each one of these slabs here is different from the other ones. <coughs> Next one, you see, you see each one, they are not identical. You can see the first one, the second one. Here they are, mounted on this traditional scaffolding, which has no double coverage that slabs have. Next one. And here is the end of it, the cables that are holding together on this one. Next one. Like, for instance, when the time is 
in all the directions. And this is where the kinetic gas theory of statistical mechanics plays an important role because the molecules are, uh, are moving in all the uh, space, in the space where they are, with any speed and any direction. And, but statistically, they follow, as you know, a rule, which is the law of uh, Gauss or Laplace, that is the normal law of distribution, normal distribution. So I have to know these things. I didn't know them. I want to show all these things. That means that when you want to do something because you have some intuition, then you need to acquire the means, the theoretical means, in order to be able to take the it's necessary to produce what you want. This we can talk later on if you want talk about this problem, this particular problem. That is the, the relationship between intuition, the uh, rational part of yourself, and also the material. That is the three things that you need in order to produce something. So <coughs> here I play a very fast, I mean, a very short example of uh, this kind of music that was written in the 30 years ago, that is with the statistical methods, that is probabilistic methods. I had to study probabilities. I don't know. At that time, I only knew about probabilities. All those who did care about uh, anonymity, that is how to produce nature. Uh, plants mm -hmm. and also uh, raising the uh, cattle and things like that, which would be very nice. So, I don't know with this, I don't know if you can go to the and uh, how people feel uh, this way before the pet and the problems of sociology. So <coughs> here I will show you some, uh, uh, let's see some of these uh, slides. You see, here there are uh, identical sounds, I mean, point sounds, but they are linked together because I want to, uh, the part of one instrument that we're going to play. So if it starts, one instrument starts here, it goes up, it goes down, and then it goes up, and so on and so forth. But the sounds are the point. Next one, and you see a general shape of a of a, of a vacuum <coughs> Here you have the distribution of the this are this circle. Each line is a sliding tone, and the distribution of the slopes of the sliding tones follow the uh, Gauss distribution. It took me no time to do that by hand. Next one. Many lines and then short space. Next one. Next one. All this was translated into the traditional notation of this another kind of shape, like a cloud going up and down, also always in the traditional domain, the first sign. Next one. This is an atmosphere where you have increase of the the strain is to explain the phenomenon of the insanity of the bits of the phenomenon of the phenomenon that is all sorts of terms that the strain is to help us produce and also the sun that can see it's like 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 stars you know, like shooting stars with the light next one Nice number of uh, wind going from uh, high diversity to very small region of the uh, of, uh, beaches. Okay. Next one. Next one. This is another wave form produced by short and you will see the detail of that in the next slide. You see there is no way, long distance, but there is a regular 
Ellis decided that to produce the illusion of a continuous curve. X1 is another shape where they are all producing kind of uh, bottom and a very loud sound. Then they stand still, and here they are mounted very properly in high pitches without holding that pressure. But these illusions can be dragged up and down. But since the shape, the macroscopic shape, is not then you hear the macroscopic shape that way, as there are also interesting psychological output or anything like that. So let me play you the day, just the beginning of the piece, in which, uh, since there were many uh, uh, string instruments, they, I could use them as also as percussion instruments. They don't like that, of course. <laughs> <laughs> they know on their instruments they are. Yes, I tried to do that uh, with Bach. Uh, 
because the idea of translating that to uh, another way came to me much earlier because when I had difficulties with the subtitle, I mean, the script, why there is no any other single way uh, that would uh, express, express the same thing? What sort of geometry is created then as a result? Well, what kind of geometry? What kind of form is created as a result of that? Nothing very interesting. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so there are shapes like I designed there, step, step, like step function, like stepwise. Ah. So you're going like staircase, going up and down. And if you have um, more voices, then uh, I can call it voices. Then uh, this, uh, uh, stairs are mixed up, so you can, unless you draw them with cups, you can't draw. But then again, uh, it's not that. Uh, of course, what you can see uh, is um, no, no, not much. You have to apply other pieces, more complex ones, and some movements uh, in between the terms, in between the segments, and also the speed. And then you might get some image. But uh, it's not accurate at all. Can you take my No, I wouldn't do that. Why not? Because there are thousands of ways in which you can translate music. Which one is the best? What about, the, what about an architectural plan? An architectural plan? Well, uh, that is uh, from uh, I always did architectural music group on this group, but the thing that was interesting for me is that the way, not in this case, the way that architecture is interesting is the overall way that the architecture, an architect has to approach it. You see, in the schools of music, usually, and still today, they train the students by saying, okay, you have a, let's say, a subject, pattern or a series and uh, with some rules to amplify that that is polyphonic rules and also say harmonic rules and you make your piece suppose you have the cue you know about how it works the cue the, and uh, with polyphonic rules you find out the things and you propose whereas so from the element tiny element you go to the complexity as an architect has at the same time to think about the material, about the money, the way, the place where it has to start, the uh, functions that has to be, aesthetics, uh, styles, and so on and so forth. That is, it has to do with his mind. Well, I don't say that all the architects do that. <laughs> <laughs> they should do that, you see. I remember once, uh, because this year, said, I don't remember the first thing about saying that uh, he had an idea a uh, gargoyle and from that shape of the gargoyle he imagined the whole architecture but maybe that was a kind of talk that he had but in fact this is a, a real interesting way to approach problems in any domain for instance a painter maybe he has some ideas of an abstract painter uh, yes, or even a How is he working? He starts uh, with a uh, general idea and with his uh, material and uh, that is the color, the palette, then uh, the shapes that he works with that. He has to approach the game in many ways at the same time and foresee the question, foresee the content that he's going to find the person that he's going to obtain. And with the work, he might absolutely reject what he had first of all. The thing that only the work is able to lead him, conduct him to some, to some results. To some results. Mm -hmm. So that was a, uh, an interesting way of uh, approaching music. Probably that was also a natural way. This is why I appreciated very much this way. That was uh, what I learned also to do in Much of the much of the first scores that you do 
the, the first scores, scores that you showed, which were made out had the bullet Prague Lloyd, yes. were derived from the pavilion that you designed. So in a way, you'll use the quality right for that. No, no. No, all the way around. It's the other way around. <laughs> the music came first, all the... First. Yes, the music was written in 54, and I designed the pavilion in 56, three years later. So I had a fresh in mind what I had done in music. And uh, it, yes, and besides that, I was more interested in doing something interesting in shapes than uh, just uh, doing the scapoli and things like that. And what is interesting also is the record was here, in spite, in spite of the fact that he didn't do that, he accepted it. And uh, he, uh, he not only he accepted, but uh, we had constructed. There were, for instance, contractors coming to discuss about the shape, saying, oh, we can't do that shape because of <laughs> We have to do that with uh, some other frame, with frames, for instance, in wood, or metallic frames, like the Eiffel uh, constructor scale, give it that kind of uh, give the Eiffel Tower. And uh, I said, no, it's a pity not to respect the shapes, which should work, should work, because it is mathematically more or less proven. If they are faithful to the shapes, that they should be self-standing, without any support, without any frame. And the Corbusier was absolutely uh, on my side, and not against, because he was interested in that kind of experiment, <coughs> and liked uh, the shape of the So, yes, the shape, the shape was built from this material. For me? The shape was built from one particular piece of music. No, it was not well. <laughs> Uh, you see, it was a, let's say, a, a, no, a commission. You remember, see, but the Davis people want to present at the exhibition. So, the committee had the, the uh, choice, the free choice of saying, I want to work with that man, or with another man. He asked the Vares, and also me, or with him. Now, if uh, the Davis people were so scared by the music of Vares, because they, uh, they never uh, heard it, and when they heard it, first, uh, first few minutes that I was being, they were so scared that say, no, no, we can't uh, show this music to mm -hmm. the mass of people coming from other places of Europe and so on. So they wanted to dismiss the fire of Valais and uh, I remember the policy was an Indian at the time, at Chandigarh, and uh, I received the, a letter from Philip saying that they were going to fire the Valais and try another proposal much more popular. I sent the game to Gordy saying that uh, it's possible that he had to take the responsibilities of the situation. And he immediately sent the game to Philip saying that if they fired the bias, he was going to be at the same instant. And uh, so the teams uh, accepted bias in spite of their uh, doubt. Uh, I think that because they tried to form another group of show with other people, like those who were doing the saw in the area that is night and the sound in the chateau of France, all the people did that all the time in the 50s. It was a new thing. And the man that was doing that was ordered by Philips to do a show. And they asked another very important composer to do the music. And uh, we knew that. And uh, they was, because they were so much afraid. And I saw this, but we saw him, they invited us this time after the opening to see the spectacle. Of course, it was uh, not that how the spectacle had been performed uh, in the and that we So they tried to do that. Now, after the exhibition, had to be torn down because it was in the oil part. And then it had to be in the kingdom. So they destroyed the building. But had it survived, we could have other people doing things there because it's a kind of auditorium. And we are missing very much because we have joined for contemporary music or for other experiments as well. Because these shapes are not like a sphere, which is terrible, terrible for the sound. Not like a cylinder, but it is a kind of, uh, you can speak if you want about the acoustics of such same shapes, which is an uh, important thing. But um, we, what do we do? What the architects are doing today? They are doing shapes which are very traditional time because they are built with the other jobs and things like that. Whereas if they wanted to think about other shapes, to be a shape uh, of uh, 
future situations in music, in music, the loudspeakers, all traditional ways, all both. They could uh, invent other shapes that would be useful to, to many, many expressions of the music, music, and it shows uh, again going together. But that's not the case. Because there are many okay, local house in Paris, which is what you can imagine the most traditional thing. Architecturally and also as a function of space. Play uh the letter from the other things like that. It's a big <laughs> and uh, we don't have the uh, spaces to do uh, concrete other things, there are no such things. But as you see, I mean, London Civil Union has no place to rehearse. So from time to time, we go at the BBC at the studio, but uh, the sound is terrible because it's not made to have the acoustics there, so we can work out. So it's a real problem, also, and so on. But uh, for instance, the players of the world, they do the acoustics. But they, it's not really made <coughs> for other things than the traditional ways of playing off some speakers and uh, things like that. It's, uh, it doesn't fit. Of course, it, it works, but it's not the same thing. So, shall we go next or maybe you are tired? <laughs> That's linked to originality. If you follow rules, you are not original. You need to be original. That's not fault. Is uh, nature original? Is the universe original? So what kind of rules finally you are going to either to choose, then you are not original, or if you are original, you have to invent the universe, or just to be original. To what extent? Suppose that you have a uh, orchestra, the like it, it stays, and uh, you want to abolish the diabolic rules, that is the classic rules, or even civil rules, or whatever rules, I don't know much I do. And to replace them with other ways to construct things. But constructing things means that you are using the events produced by the officers and the players. So again, if you want to be more ancient, you would say, to escape from that. And maybe I would like to construct new sounds, new ways of producing sounds. And of course, this is not just a tendency of, uh, of the tendency of music today is to use computers in order to produce sounds, this synthesize sounds that were never heard, which is uh, not the case here because they are being explicit. Technological and also mental and analytical in all the studios on the laboratories of uh, synthesizing computer music in Europe or in the States or elsewhere from where they are. But anyway, we can ask that question and then we can say, but why should it be sound? You see, from um, step to step, we want to know the problematics of what is the material, what is the rules, what is the rules, 
ein Teil der Jugend kam kaum in der Problemreich und äh, ist es possible to äh, create something out of what? Out of what? And that is the that is create finally a game of universe. Uh, I think that, uh, that this is the question that aroused recently in astrophysics. From uh, questioning the, what, the situation of the Big Bang theory, which is still a theory, before the 10 power minus uh, of or something, the second. That is very, 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 very good. In the question, was uh, impossible to be, uh, uh, to be understood. Uh, thinking that the rules, that the laws of physics, which are today, were being there, they came with a world where they were active 15 billion years ago. Mm. So uh, some of the theories came to the idea that maybe the uh, universe as we know it today started from scratch, from nothing, not from emptiness because the planet is not, it's a game, empty you have time and space, but from nothing means actually from nothing, to the imagine of thing. As Parmenides said that uh, it's essentially for Christ. Yeah. And therefore, abolishing for them, because you start something from nothing, you don't have time. Now, there are some phenomena in physics that uh, are uh, like that, for instance, where at a given instant we have the creation of a particle and not a particle. Or when they vanish and they produce a uh, wave of some, some kind. Uh, so, uh, that problem of uh, music, the question of it, linked at that time, in my head, at that time, it was linked to that problem. What rules to use deterministic and deterministic? And uh, the, I thought at the time that maybe if it is possible to construct a structure out of uh, probability functions, which, which will decide what time, instant, or what kind of event, what kind of instrument, what kind of note, what kind of uh, uh, tone, what kind of all the characteristics of sound, then we have something that would approach to the mathematics of rules, the original rules. Now, today I think that this is not absolutely true. The proof is that we have many probability distributions. We have, for instance, the Poisson. No, Poisson is not uh, fish, Mr. Poisson. We have the dogs, we have the fish, we have all sorts of logistic distributions, we have all sorts of distributions which differ from each other. So therefore you have the let's say the asymmetric or chaotic behavior thanks to those rules, but they are different how do you say the plural chaos? Chaoses. They are different, they are differentiated in their uh, in their uh, output, they should be. For uh, instance, <coughs> if you have, if you have what? If you have a, a, a dice, for instance, and uh, you throw it, well, if it is uh, uh, symmetric, then you have the maximum undeterminacy. If it is not symmetric, you have a score of determinacy. But this is the dimension, even if you have it in high, that is one six. You have a cube of a dodecahedron. In that case, you can play the series of the dodecahedron, the dodecahedron. And uh, the, if it is symmetric, that is, if it has the maximum undeterminacy, it has to be absolutely symmetric. In that case, we have the probability space on each side. Equal to 1 to 6. But then it is a rule here. So, what would be the thing? That the thing would be that you change at each instant this probability distribution of phases, so that you have a much higher undeterminacy. 
this very zone that you that each flow has its own usage, its own temperament, let's say. Uh, each distribution is for unity. So, therefore, there is no real freedom. So originality is a freedom because it is very close to the problem of freedom. Freedom of imagination, freedom of action. You know, yeah, we know that in democracy you can have a of freedom because you will <coughs> kill other people. Your neighbors who start to live. But in the ideal situation, you, you can, if you are free, without being made with the walls, you are free to imagine things and you steal it. So this uh, uh, freedom is very close to the problem of the nature of man. Is he really free to do these things, to do what he wants? And that is again linked to very ancient things like the stations from that man is possible uh, uh, for product of nature, of course, in the atomic, atomic, atomic uh, of the most of the time. But there are so many causalities, we measure causalities everywhere, that uh, even the, tire, the remote, most remote uh, star in the sky is able to influence his own uh, will. That means he has no will, free will. Against that came uh, Pythagoras with his kilometer theory that was saved for us by the Critias, in which he says that uh, the atoms are falling. Forward, in parallel ways. But there are very tiny movements. This is the theory. Because if they are not tiny, by infinitesimal, we would say today. Because if they are not infinitesimal, there is causality. And if there is a causality, you are not free free. But these benchmarks, they move close to each other, they produce the bodies that we don't the universe, the stars, the human body. And therefore, we have a certain amount of freedom in what we are doing. Now, as you know, in uh, physics, this is close again to the problem of uniformity produced in quantum mechanics by Heisenberg. And more recently, we have again the, the, the problem of uh, foresee foreseeing of the planetary movements, of course, of uh, our system in, uh, let's say, one million years. Is that possible? Well, thanks to the, the Newton, the Newton mechanics, would be possible to foresee that in the universe. But that's not true, because we neglect very tiny influences from far away stars and from other elements that would absolutely destroy that intimacy and therefore produce chaotic events. Chaotic. So you see chaotic uh, situations. So you see how much these problems are linked to the human destiny, to the stream, to the originality of the world. And to uh, physics, the cosmos, to the universe. Now, <coughs> we need to be very careful. That's a new question I have to say. I think that it's a basic property of uh, mankind to be original, to do things, to produce things different from what we do. And even if he wanted not to be original, he cannot escape the fate of uh, being different each instant in his life. And it's just, this is just a different period of time. It's not, never even find the same, absolutely the same. So it's a degree of difference that counts. And then I think the problem of man is like that. And you can see also that the same thing in the animals and the plants. And the, because you see the evolution of the species, which invented so many forms. People say, uh, some people say it's God, some people say you know it's nature, some other people don't know, like they say. But then the fact is that this is the case with uh, the survival of the elements on the earth. What about the, the galaxies? What about the, what happens in the, in the world? You know, very important. What happens in the subatomic uh, domain? You know, even less. But perhaps there are creative systems, things with the subatomic or in the universe, and uh, therefore the rules are lasted for a certain time and not forever. And there is also a kind of originality. So the problems of uh, music, the architects or painters or even politicians is to try to be original and interesting, but it's different. 
there are uh, Mr. Snyder offers to, um, well, say you are. Yes, yes. 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 Okay, and uh, he's offering to play another um, piece of yes. music as, yeah. as you like. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Here's some music now. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, a piece that was played at the proms last year in the uh, and uh, the music was conducted by people who would like to listen to some of it. Yes. No? Yes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.